So, you know, we've heard you talk multiple times about the dangers of dairy consumption for our overall health. And you even published a book outlining the negative physical and psychological effects of eating cheese. Okay, regardless of what the science says, the U.S. continues to produce more cheese and more dairy products than any country in the world. Okay, can you give our audience some insight here into the effects of eating dairy products on metabolic diseases like hypertension, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, and Alzheimer's disease? Sure. You know, it's a peculiar thing. Um, we all grew up with the idea that milk is good for strong bones or a great source of calcium or these kinds of things. Um, and yet when we look scientifically at these issues, they get much more complicated than that. Um, it turns out that milk is the biggest source in the diet of saturated fat. That's the, the fat that raises your cholesterol. Uh, saturated fat is also linked to Alzheimer's disease. And the number one source is actually not meat. The number one source is dairy, especially cheese. Um, th there are many other issues about it. But when we do research studies and the people come in, they got diabetes, we put them on a completely vegan diet, meaning no cheese, no animal products at all. They do great. They lose weight. Their diabetes improves. Sometimes it goes away. Even despite these things, I hear so many people say, oh, gee, the one food that I really still crave is cheese. I think, what's that about? I know you've, you've heard this too. You know, why is it that people crave cheese? It smells like old socks. Why do people want cheese so much? Um, and so I decided to try to figure what this was about. And we found out several things. Uh, number one, cheese is fattening. It, it just is. It's, it's very high in calories. Um, number two, it's uh, addicting. And I don't use that word lightly. I mean physically addicting, not necessarily terribly strongly, but strong enough that people have trouble breaking free. And third, it's linked to all kinds of health problems. And just to make it really, really short and sweet, um, the health problems relate to the fat. We, we talked about heart disease. We talked about Alzheimer's disease. The protein that's in cheese, as well as in, in, in other dairy, but is concentrated in cheese, is linked especially to respiratory issues like asthma um, or the ear infections little kids will get. Um, or conditions like migraine or rheumatoid arthritis, where there is a sensitivity in the body. Uh, proteins will trigger this, and particularly dairy. And then finally, the, the milk sugar, um, which is not so much in cheese, but in other dairy products, lactose is responsible for all kinds of problems, from digestive problems to problems caused when the milk sugar breaks apart into galactose and glucose. And the galactose is associated with infertility, ovarian cancer, and other issues. Now, these are all under further investigation, but we are way past the point where we reached um, a critical mass of evidence saying, you know, nature had it right when, when nature started the weaning process. You know, a baby can drink from the baby's mom, but the weaning process protects us from having the risks of having milk after, after infancy. You, you mentioned earlier that cheese has an addictive nature to it. Can you go into a little bit of detail here about the casomorphines and exactly what they are and how they function inside of your brain and how, how they can cause a sort of addictive nature? Yes. Uh, it, it, this has been really an amazing journey here, too. Um, why would cheese be addicting? Um, and you could say, well, people just like cheese. And sort of part of it is what I call the potato chip effect, meaning anything that's salty and greasy, we get hooked on. So if you have a potato chip, the grease and the salt, we, we just eat those things. Same with onion rings or French fries. And cheese has that. There's actually more cheese salt, more sodium, in a two-ounce serving of cheese than there is in a two-ounce serving of potato chips, loaded with salt. And it's 70% fat, so people tend to get hooked for that reason. But there is a drug effect also, and that's the casomorphins that you were mentioning. So if you were to look at casein, C-A-S-E-I-N, casein. The, the casein protein is the main protein in cow's milk. And in cheese, it's concentrated. As you turn milk into, into cheese, the water is pushed out and the casein is concentrated. And in your digestive tract, those casein proteins start breaking apart. And, and if you can look at them under a powerful microscope, it looks like a string of beads. A, a protein is amino acids all hooked up one after the other, after the other, after the other. And then you digest them 
And all those amino acids come apart like beads falling off of a necklace. Except uh, when casein breaks apart into individual amino acids, it leaves some connected, four or five or six or seven beads still hooked together. These are little peptides called casomorphins, casein-derived morphine-like compounds. They go into the bloodstream, they reach the brain, and they attach the to the very same receptors that heroin or morphine or Demerol or fentanyl or other narcotics attach to in the brain. And they're not as strong as heroin. Uh, the strongest one is called morphoceptin. This is a, uh, a four amino acid peptide that comes out of dairy. And when it attaches to the receptors, it has about one tenth the brain binding power compared to pharmacy grade morphine. So it's, it's significant, it's substantial, but not enough to get you arrested. Um, so it's just enough for a person to say, wow, that cheese, I just like having it around. I hope I have some in my refrigerator <laughs> and people think it's all taste and mouthfeel. Uh, it's not, it's a, it's a drug effect. And the other, by the way, um, the other reason that we know that there's a narcotic part of it is if, it, if, if you or other people, you know, ever had, uh, serious surgery and after the operation, you get totally constipated. And what's that about? The reason you're constipated is because they've been giving you Demerol or other narcotic painkillers to knock out your pain, but narcotics also shut down the digestive tract. Well, if a person has overdone it on cheese, what happens is the narcotics in the cheese will shut down their digestive tract too, and they'll complain of constipation. And people who eat a lot of cheese find themselves at the drugstore a lot trying to buy fiber supplements and things like that. It's, it's just a narcotic effect of the, the cheese, in this case, on their digestion. Wow. So, so there you have it. Very <laughs> interesting. Okay, so since you mentioned casein, can you go into some detail about how casein from cow's milk increases the risk for developing type 1 diabetes? Yeah, you know, what really got my attention, this was 1992. Um, there was a paper in the New England Journal of Medicine where they brought in more than 100 kids all the kids, they, they, the reason they brought them into a study is that they all had been recently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It's about 140 kids. Um, they all were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. They stuck a needle in all the kids' arms. They pulled a, a blood sample, and they sent it to the laboratory. And what they found was antibodies in their blood. And, and we've known about this for a long time because antibodies in the blood are little torpedoes that your white blood cells make to destroy a virus or to destroy a bacterium or in some cases to destroy a cancer cell. The antibodies are little torpedoes designed to get rid of a threat. And it looks like these particular antibodies were capable of destroying their insulin producing cells, the insulin producing cells of the pancreas. If, if you destroy those, you, you can't make insulin anymore. However, the source of these antibodies, it appeared to be uh, cow's milk. They, the, the, the antibodies were formed to attack a protein in cow's milk. And then by friendly fire, those same uh, proteins, those, those same antibodies are able to turn around and attack the insulin producing cells of the pancreas. Now this is, um, I mean, that was very compelling because every, every single child they studied had this. Um, it's what I described as it being cause and effect is a theory. However, there's a substantial amount of evidence in support of this theory, uh, mainly that when kids do not drink cow's milk, uh, if they're breastfed as kids from milk from mom rather than from a cow, their risk of developing uh, type one diabetes goes way, way down. So uh, while scientists are continuing to fight about this, I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage people to not expose their children to dairy products at all. And, and that means don't give them cow's milk. Don't use a cow's milk-based formula. And this will sound funny. When a woman is pregnant, not drinking cow's milk. Mm -hmm. Now, this is I'm saying this to be cautious, but the reason I say that is that we have now learned that cow's milk proteins that a mother consumes, even fairly large proteins, can in some cases go through her digestive tract into her blood. Um, they will get into her breast milk. We, we learned about this with um, colic mother's breastfeeding and the baby's crying unconsolably. And if the mother takes certain things out of her diet, then the baby stops crying. And that's because these foods are getting into, into uh, her milk. 
Caffeine is notorious. Chocolate is also one, but dairy is a huge one. Um, and it's fairly large dairy molecules that get into your milk. So bottom line, um, I think more research is needed on, in, in this area to tell you the truth, but we have more than enough information to say, let's just not expose kids to cow's milk at all. And let's see if we can prevent this disease. And there's so many great other alternatives. I mean, there's really just, you know, no reason not to avoid the, the dairy milk when you have all these other great options. Oh, well, absolutely. And l- let's face it. I mean, there are cultures that didn't have dairy at all until recently. Japan, for example. Uh, I remember it was the 1980s. There was a film crew that came over to interview me and we were talking about milk. And I, I noticed that the interviewer kept wrinkling her nose whenever we would talk about milk. And I asked her later, I said, what's that about? And she said, well, she didn't like milk and milk was not part of their upbringing at all, but it, they had been pushed to drink it so they could be big like Americans. Um, and, uh, I, you know, Japan has suffered with the influx of McDonald's and fast food of all kinds of, and dairy was part of it. But uh, diabetes in Japan was much rarer than, than it has become. So anyway, bottom line, we need more study, but there is no reason to, to expose our kids to cow's milk. And by the way, they don't necessarily need rice milk or soy milk or almond milk. They can have those to splash on their cereal, but the, physiologically the need is actually water.